All right, t-test, side-by-side comparison using Excel and R. Kick back, have a cup of tea, enjoy the show. All right, t-test come in a couple different varieties. I'm going to show you independent samples, uh, dependent samples. Independent type of t-test simply means that it's not pre-test, post-test, where you're, you're testing the same individual twice. This is scores on some measure, and there's two separate groups. So it's it's a little different. So so here here we have our data set up in Excel. It, it's not organized yet, so let's go ahead and organize it. Uh, let, let's start first by sorting this. Uh, data so that all of our group ones are together and all of our group twos are together. Uh, it'll make our copying and pasting just a whole lot easier. So um, let's go ahead and, and, and now let's just take our, our group two variables and our group two scores and let's just cut them using control X. Command X for you Excel users. Of course, you can't do this in Excel as easy. And then, in, uh, oops, let me undo that. Too busy talking, not busy, not busy enough paying attention to what I'm doing. Control X, and then Control V. Okay, now I've got so I've got my group two, which is my my intervention group. Let me go ahead and call that intervention. And and then I have my group ones all together, which was my control. So they're together. I can get rid of this column completely now. I'm done with it. Um, what is it that I want to do? So let me let me go find my data analysis tool pack and I want to find t tests to sample assuming equal variance uh, should I pick that one or should I pick unequal now they were randomly selected but however I did give one an intervention I didn't give the other an intervention so one to control group. So I'm going to pick unequal variances. Okay, so let me grab my, my data, which involves simply hitting my little um, icon, spreadsheet icon, and doing the drag and drop thing. Pretty simple when you got a small data set. Drag and drop. I have labels in my first row. Hypothesized mean difference. If I had a hypothesis about my mean difference, I would put something in. I'm going to put zero in there. If I don't put anything in, it will assume zero. So uh, here's my um, where I want to put my output, right there in D1. So it's right next to my data. Make it nice and neat to look at. Then I click OK. So what do we have here? Here's my, my, my data. Let me um, go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Um, let me uh, find my um, um, decimal point decreaser. We don't need all those decimal points. All right, so um, what do I want to look at here? Uh, I want my T statistic. That's important to me. I want my T critical value, since I'm assuming that there's a difference because one gets an intervention and not, I want to take a look at my my uh, critical value for a one tail, not a two tail. Remember, if I didn't have a hypothesis about change, I would look at my um, uh, my two tail. So. Um, So how do I read this? Um, well, my t statistic is is negative 
2.13. So, so that is interesting, but uh, it's not the big kahuna. What we're really interested in is these critical values. Um, uh, and for the moment, we can uh, ignore the, the, the negative sign because um, it doesn't ma really matter here. And we want to, we want to um, decide whether um, the critical value exceeds or, or does not exceed. And, um, and when the critical value, um, when, the, when the T statistic exceeds the critical value in magnitude, we accept the null hypothesis uh, no, we reject the null hypothesis that uh, these two are different. And, and since it does uh, exceed the null hypothesis, we can accept that the two are different. So um, <clears throat> uh, what we would say then is that our intervention worked. OK, so here's the same data. i got to get it over into R. Uh, before I did it over into R, I want to I want to do a quick um, change. So let me go ahead and hit Control F, and then we'll do Find and Replace. Um, so find what? So find Group One. Group One, and replace that with Group One was what my control group. Is that correct? That was correct. So I just I can replace all of them. Fifteen replacements. That's good. Then group two was my intervention group. And I'm changing those because you can see that we before we had a space in our in our names, and, and R doesn't really like to see spaces too much. Now if we had, if we had quotation marks around it. It would have worked just fine uh, importing it into R. So let me go ahead and save this. Get ready for my um, for my um, import. Um, and so, okay, I've already got R Commander opened up. I will. Um, 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 I've already set it to the to the location where this particular file is located. Let me get this data into R. So import data. So I I I have this in an Excel sheet. So uh, it'll it'll um, pop up um, uh, a, a thing to ask me to name the data set. I'll just call it independent IND for short. And then it'll ask me to go find that Excel file. And since I put the Excel file in the same directory as my working directory, you know, there it is. So next is my my um, um, little uh, dialog box that asks me to select one table. Um, it's actually one sheet, but they call it a table. So the name of that one is IND org. Org is the one that I want. I click OK, and then I'm going to do a quick viewing of my data set. And lo and behold, there's my data set. Looks like it it imported just fine. So, all right. So um, our commander is going to easily let me calculate the um, independent samples t-test. So since we have just uh, one grouping variable, which is called group in this case, and one, one variable that is um, an integer, uh, uh, it's automatically selected for us. So, but if we had a bunch of other ones, we would have to slide, decide which ones we want. So. <clears throat> What kind of um, of, um, of um, hypothesis do we want to do? Do we want that uh, hypothesis that the difference is greater than zero, 
or the difference is less than zero. Uh, we, we want a one-tail hypothesis here. So let's see which way is it going to go? Is it going to be greater than zero between the control and the intervention? Um, less than, greater than. So. And do we need to assume equal variance? No. So click OK. All right. So um, we uh, can take a look here at our our, um, our output. We have um, a T of. Well, let me pull the um, the original back up here from 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 Excel, and we can see that we've got you know, just about the same darn results. 2.135, 2.13 on the t-score, negative, excuse me, negative. Um, it gives us our degrees of freedom as 27.183. Uh, I don't know why it says the 0.183, 27. Um, and then we've got a probability value of 0.98. Um, which is, is not a significant value. Let me rerun that test. Alternative equals less. All right. Yeah, I, I, I get my my, my arrows uh, uh, confused here. So. Um, The way R reads things is it, it will read things um, alphabetically. So the control group comes before the C, and the control comes before the I and the intervention. So, so we can see we get the the, the, the same results. Uh, gives us the mean. Um, Gives us our probability value, 0.02, uh, our t-test. So our, our one-sided um, um, test for um, of two different samples again shows that our intervention worked. And if you're ever in doubt um, um, that you got it right, run it the other way because. Um, it stopped me in my tracks because I expected a different result, and so that's always worth a good second look. So that is the independent samples. Now let's just quickly jump over to the dependent samples. So our dependent sample, a little bit more complicated. Um, question, is, is the treatment a change agent? Uh, question, are scores on Satisfaction survey relative to this study. So we've got a couple of different things that that um, uh, that we could potentially look at here, and uh, uh, we won't go into both of them. We'll just look at um, our variables. Client ID is the you know it's it's the score on on uh, well, client ID is just their client ID. Even though it's numbered one through twenty-nine or thirty, thirty, um, it's um, it's a number. I mean, it's it's a no nominal. It's a name variable. It's not a it's not a true number. So uh, it would be meaningless to try and do a average or something like that. So you got a pretest on your your satisfaction with your treatment tri prior to the new treatment your satisfaction after treatment, 
and then finally your your uh, global assessment of fun functioning before and your global assessment of functioning after. So this this would be professionals rating somebody's functioning before and after treatment and its clients just satisfaction with treatment. So let's go ahead and and um, and see how we would do that using um, using um, Excel. So let's start with our um, data analysis tool pack, and this will this will be a paired samples. So let's go ahead with our paired samples. Uh, let's start by getting our um, pre-score from our from our treatment. And then we can go find our post-test score from our treatment. Whoa, slow down there, Bob. There's our post-test scores. Um, um, our output range, we can put it right next door up here, so it's nice and easy to keep it keep it um, handy. So, all right. So again, our our output. Let's do a little 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 housekeeping here. Uh, we can see we got some exp exponential numbers there. Uh, it's no big deal. Let's go ahead and uh, decrease the decimal points. Um, All right, again, what we need to know is our T statistic. This, this is a pretest, post test, so we're expecting a, a direction. So we want our critical values for, for, um, a, to, be a, to be a one tail test. And we want our probability score on the one tail. And so what we can see is we've got uh, our T statistic of of negative 9.82, which 9.82 exceeds 1.7 in the um, um, for a critical value. So we would we would uh, reject the null, the null hypothesis, which would mean that what we're saying is that our intervention worked, that that our post-test scores are different from and better than our uh, pretest scores. Our global assessment functioning is oh, a mean score of, 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 of 12 points higher, 13 points, over, over 13 points higher. So, so thumbs up for that, that, new, um, that new intervention. So let's make sure we save that. Continue. Oh, we don't care. Uh, now let's get this data into R and quickly do a uh, um, dependent. And let's call this one dependent. Click OK. Same data set, but it's it's in a different uh, name. So imported successfully, 30 rows, five columns. Good deal. View our data set looks just fine to me. Statistics means so paired sample t-test is what I want. So my first variable will be um, the pretest score for, for the treatment. And then the second variable is the post-test score for the treatment. Um, difference and click OK. And there we can see uh, a negative t-test of 9.816, round up to 9.82, 29 degrees of freedom. Um, same as Excel, probability value of a way, way low uh, 5.021 exponent 11, and then um, our confidence interval, which is uh, 
um, I don't know we need to know right now so uh, the other question we had was uh, was 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 that does the um, um, pretest and the post test um, we could see if it changes any based on treatment so so pre-satisfaction post satisfaction same options um, probability value is is um, is low um, so it, it's not a significant test we got a really low t-score so uh, what what would that tell me tell me that uh, the, the the satisfaction is irrelevant of what treatment they were getting in this case and this is just fictitious data so don't don't read read anything into this so all right so that's a quick and dirty how to do your t-test in Excel and R with a little bit of understanding of, of how do we analyze them